Some people like J.R.R. Tolkien embrace the highs of harmony, creating wellsprings of joy that everyone can appreciate and all can drink from. And then you have those like Amazon, who revel in injecting sour notes into a sublime symphony. Then there are those tragic tales of those who bend the knee to a giant. Well, in the last few days, Amazon has an answer for the Rings of Power backlash. They've decided to draft Middle-earth influencers to turn their backs on Tolkien, then have them build a moat as a defensive barrier while they stand guard in front of the studio as Tolkien apologists. Anyone, anyone who serves two masters will be torn in two and trusted by no one. Fight for you. Swear it. We will die for Saruma. Welcome, everyone. I hope this video finds you out. I'm excited for today. We're going to do the improbable. We're going to pull good news from bad. You remember a couple of months ago when Prime tried to peddle their fake super fans to sell the public on their love for the legendarium? Well, that didn't go over too well. It failed miserably. It bombed. You mean we're going to see another side of Sauron? Yes. Like maybe he falls in love. I I Maybe mean, there's a reason. Every villain's a hero in his own story, right? I think right? we're gonna find out more. People are gonna fall in love with him and be like, I can change him. <laughs> well, Amazon is up to its old tricks again. This time, Prime is reaching out to enlist content creators and Tolkien fan sites. They're tempting them with behind the scenes access to information and all they have to do is cast aside their principles and their passions in order to promote Amazon's prime time desecration of Tolkien to the public as a praiseworthy masterpiece. Unbelievable. And you're gonna ask why? Why would Prime seduce content creators? Simple. They want to create a feedback loop. It's their very own Ash paradigm. See, they want to create the power of groupthink to overwhelm the mindless masses, the everyday Mr. and Mrs. Normie, so they can believe that Amazon's Rings of Power series is the end-all, be-all respecting Tolkien's legendarium. Oh, well, guess what? Now this is happening. Excuse me. Excuse me. What are you doing? That's how I roll. They're going to use these content creators to create a treasure trove of information that then Amazon's media marionettes can point to when they're writing their puff piece articles and saying, look at over here. These experts of Aya and Arda have said that the rings of power is the holy grail, the testament to Tolkien, and it is delivered to you by Prime right to your screen. And anyone, anyone who disagrees with them are either clueless or ists and foes of every foul variety. This is nothing but a cheap parlor trick, pure propaganda, nothing more. And when I heard about it, I was a little bit sad. We've seen this before. A long time ago, the OneRing.net were some of the most ardent defenders of Tolkien's Middle Earth. They used to hold Peter Jackson's feet to the fire, saying you're going to follow the legacy and the lore to the T. Canon is paramount. But that all changed. And now they merely sit at their master's table waiting for Amazon's leftover scraps to fall on the floor. Simply shills. And like I said, it happens. And it seems Amazon is so desperate to save the rings of power from its doomed fate that they're bringing together a bunch of creators. Now, I do not go after influencers. I'm not into all that reactionary theatrics just don't do it. I don't have the time for it and don't like drama. I do not go after everyday people. I hunt giants. But we need to know who are the people who respect and love Tolkien and who do not. 
So when I read this announcement on Twitter from Fellowship of the Fans, we'll now be able to work with Amazon to create content based on official news as well. We're looking forward to bringing more material for you all. I was stunned. I said, George, wait a minute, pop the brakes. Give it a second. Don't jump the gun. Maybe this is some kind of like belated April Fool's joke. Maybe it's one of the members of Fellowship of the Fans reached out and cut a deal with Amazon, but the others didn't know. Let's give it a little time. Let's just wait. I always like to give it the best benefit of the bout to everyone. So I waited. And while I was doing it, I was thinking, who could love Tolkien and at the same time wish to work with Amazon? If we keep it in the Middle Earth framework, that would be like working with Sauron where the Dark Lord says, hey, I want you to come to Mordor. I'm going to give you behind the scenes access and maybe you can give me some critique on how I'm doing. There's no reason to do so. I, I thought, what if it's the one in a trillion where Amazon offered influencers saying, you know what? We've really messed this whole thing up. We're going to push the show back nine months, maybe a year. And with all of you together, all these experts, we're going to rework this whole mess. I know we got rid of Tom Shippey and we waited till Christopher Tolkien passed away because we wanted to pull our own, play our own game. But now we've learned our lesson. So I searched the news. Did I find any scheduling changes? Nope. None here, none here. Did I find any pushing off the date? No. So no other reason anyone could work with him. And especially after everything we've seen and read from Amazon, I cannot understand how anyone could work with him. So together, we're going to decide, is Fellowship of the Fans, are they paragons of virtue still following, still respecting Tolkien, or have they become puppets of Amazon Prime? Let's get into it. They wrote an article 48 hours later on their website. 48 hours. And in it, well, I'll let you decide for yourself. Why the second age aesthetically and tonally will feel different from the third. One of the biggest problems related to the acceptance of the Amazon project by the world fandom lies in the appearance that Middle Earth will have in the show. Can we say bullshit? You are fined two credits for violation of the verbal morality statute. What did they do right there? They're creating a straw man argument. Does anybody, has anyone complained about how the aesthetics of the show are looking in the teaser trailer or in the images we've seen in the Vanity Fair articles? Some have, but our primary concerns are following Tolkien's canon and the lore, staying within the confines of the Second Age, honoring the characters. But do you see what they did right there? In one line, the very first line, they're saying, you know what we're going to do? We're going to set aside all the things that the fellowship of, of fandom around the world has stated that they're angry about, that they're irritated about, that they see disrespecting Tolkien, and we're going to create a whole new argument. We're going to say, guess what? We hear that y'all are upset about the aesthetics, and we're going to address those, bypassing everything else. It is also not entirely true that elves all had long hair. This stylistic choice was brought exclusively by Peter Jackson in his films. But several images by the greatest Tolkienian illustrators show many elves with short hair. Furthermore, the professor never says that the Eldar all had long hair. So it is time to dispel this annoying myth. Do you know that the space in between words are some of the most important sounds that you will ever hear when listening to anyone who's trying to position themselves to have power or influence over you. When you learn to read between the gaps of words and listen to those spaces, you will always know what's truly at stake. And what is the fellowship of fans doing right here? What they're saying is, is we're going to put to bed this annoying myth. What annoying myth? Who is it annoying? It's not annoying me. It's not annoying any of the true Tolkien fans that I've ever spoken to or read about in the comment section. They're not talking about long-haired elves. What else is going on here? Did you see what they inserted there where they stated what the professor they're talking about, J.R.R. Tolkien, that he did not write that every single elf had long hair? 
So what they're informing you of, here's the space between the words that if Tolkien did not write it specifically, well, guess what? We can do anything we want. That's what Amazon's Rings of Power series is doing. Third, what do they do there? This is called overcoming the objections of the customers. Once again, they're talking about a subject without talking about it, creating excuses before you can come up with them. They're telling you there is no issue with heels. And if there is, we're disgusted by it. And we're going to end it right here and now. They're kind of doing that used car salesman pressure tactic where they're saying, look, it's right here in your face. Are you going to take it or leave it? And they're expecting that most people are just going to back away. But the reality is, is that it's not looking good for Fellowship of the Fans. The controversial theme of Hobbits will be debated for a long time. But we are focusing on the aesthetic sector and that the Harfoots were decidedly more primitive in appearance and in customs is absolutely consistent. Absolutely consistent with one. If we go back to that first Vanity Fair puff piece interview where Patrick McKay and J.D. Payne explained that they were writing the, to the novel Tolkien never wrote and then bringing it to the screen for the first time now, what did they say? But really, does it feel like Middle Earth if you don't have hobbits or something like hobbits in it? See, Patrick McKay and J.D. Payne, two untested showrunners that we discussed before, they don't care about legacy, lore, canon, or character. They're using Tolkien to strip mine his Aya and Arter in order so they can, can become Hollywood star executives. See, Inserting the hobbits for them is unnecessary because they want to bring in all the children. They're going, you can't have Lord of the Rings without hobbits. So since the hobbits don't exist in the Silmarillion, what are we going to do? We're going to create this primitive proto-race of hobbits called Harfoots. And what does Fellowship of the Fans say? Hey, we're going to debate this forever, but you know what? They're absolutely correct. I don't know about you. The decision is yours. But as far as I'm concerned, I feel bad that Fellowship of the Fans, I've used to watch their stuff. I think they're selling their good name. I feel bad for them. I do not know the reason why they're doing this. But anyone, anyone who serves two masters will only tear themselves in two in behalf of a whole. You cannot give away your heart to your feelings while at the same time following the folly of your head. It cannot be done. And if you, together with me, all of us, we want to maintain the legacy and the love for Tolkien, let your voice be heard. And remember, we never bow down. We never bend the knee. Firmly define. Step up, stand tall, and get busy living your best life now. Always forward. Last time I talked about my grandfather, but when we're getting into this about how people are loyal to Tolkien, it reminded me of the good news. Because I said in the beginning, we have good news that we're gonna pull from the bad. And what are we doing here? We are identifying who are our friends and who are our foes, who's standing with Tolkien and who's standing against him by working with Amazon. And it reminded me of a story a long time ago when I was working, when I had a company that I had first started, I had scrapped everything together. It's one of the first companies I actually was really loved. I had saved for years, slowly, 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 got some loans, it came to fruition. I was traveling with a partner of mine, we're going all over the country. We we're selling our consulting services and finally we hit the UK. And this is about a month to five weeks after his marriage. We closed this big deal, we went on a pub crawl, and that night, I went straight to the hotel room and crashed and went to bed. About an hour later, I heard this banging at the door, bang, 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 bang. And there is my partner. And he's got two ladies of the night, two escorts with him. And I was like, send them home and get back to bed. We had a few words for a while. He said, no, go away. And that was it. By the time we came back that Sunday, 
Monday morning when it hit, I had already made all the necessary things that I had to do in order to offer him a check. I'm saying, I am buying you out or I'm closing the company. Simple. Easy peasy, end of statement. You're not going to stay with me. Any person who's going to break their vows against their spouse, well, you're going to do the same to me. And it's the same way with those people who side with Amazon. Once you sell out your principles, everything else in life is about price. And that's not a way to live.